Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, today I'm going to be doing a drawing of something that I have been doing for a while. Not a specific subject matter, but just wildlife in general. I have a passion for wildlife that stretches back, golly, as far as I can remember. I've always had um, a real love for drawing animals and putting something into them that... Um, goes beyond just observation. I like to look into their eyes. I like to look at their gesture. I like to kind of delve into the thought process um, that the animal has at that particular moment. Of course, you can't really do that with certain animals. You know, your fish, your uh, your octopus, um, stuff like that. But today, I'm going to be doing a, um, a giraffe. Uh, giraffe and giraffes. Don't know quite what the plural is of it. Um, have always been intriguing to me because of how incredibly large they are, of course, their neck, but also the gentleness that they have in their eyes. Um, if you've ever seen one in person and to see how they flow and they move and they're very graceful, uh, it, it really kind of puts you at a particular frame of mind, especially when you're around them, of, of how majestic um, they are as animals. Of course, uh, you know, whenever you go to the zoo or you go somewhere like that, you're kind of removed, but some places you can get really close uh, to these animals. Um, today, uh, I hope you guys enjoy. I'm going to be using Clip Studio Paint um, Pro. Uh, they've recently done an update to it, which is fantastic. Now it's got um, pressure opacity uh, and, and some other features that uh, they were kind of emulated before in the brushes, but now they're they're in there. So, Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy, and um, we'll talk to you at the end. All right, so um, as you see the interface here um, of Clip Studio Paint um, Pro, I like to start on a tonal uh, background just because it gives me a mid-gray, or not a mid-gray, but a mid-tone for me to paint on. Um, I'm going to use a little bit darker brown uh, today just because maybe even a... No, we're going to go dark brown. A little bit lighter than that. Just because it gives me a nice medium um, tone to paint on. Uh, with giraffes, obviously, you have to have um, reference. But the same principles apply whenever I do character designs as they do whenever I'm doing wildlife. You have to have good reference. You're, you're only going to be as good as you know, the reference that you're using and or the practice that you've, um, that you've built up into your, you know, your, um, your muscle memory. Um, if you've drawn giraffes enough and or lions and or bears and or tigers, obviously you're going to have a knowledge that somebody that has never drawn such an animal, you're going to have that knowledge already built up inside of you um, to where you can draw upon it. Not only the skin textures, but also the construction of the animal itself, um, you know, all these things are very important whenever you're doing animals because you want them to be accurate. Now, what's happening right now, you see my cursor moving all around, I'm basically laying in my, um, my blueprint, my groundwork for my drawing. Um, most, if not all, of the lines that you see currently are going to be gone, they're going to be painted over, they're going to be erased, um, and I'm not really concerned with exactly, uh, you know, the cleanliness of the, uh, of the particular drawing right now. I'm merely interested in getting the proportions correct. Now, what's happening right now is as I'm going through and I can feel the drawing, and I say feel the drawing because what I do as an illustrator and in a, in a, as a drawer, as an illustrator, is I basically go through and I feel the image with with not only my eyeballs <laughs> this sounds kind of weird I feel it with my eyeballs <laughs> but really you basically go through and you scan and you rescan and you readjust and you and you kind of measure and where things should go um, and it's a continual process you as you go throughout the drawing and you readjust and you and you evaluate where the planes are you evaluate um, just the proportions, the anatomy. I mean, it's all one thing after the other, and it's one continual. Yeah, see, I need to go off the page. 
it's one continual um, evaluate reevaluation process as I'm as I'm making the drawing, as I'm sculpting the drawing with my hands. Um, you know, I've I've always had a a huge respect for sculptors, but they. I don't want to say they already have an in because they live in the three-dimensional world and they, you know, they, they basically are just translating what they know. And that, that is not something that I take lightly. But as an artist or somebody that looks in the three-dimensional world and lives in the three-dimensional world and basically translates that three-dimensional world onto a two-dimensional surface to look three-dimensional, it is a little bit different. Um, you know, I, I've known many 3D uh, artists in my life. I've known uh, a lot of 3D sculptors. I've known, um, let's see, there's a bone that comes out here, right here. It's part of his vertebrae. So he's got turns. Um, and honestly, a lot of those particular uh, individuals have relied upon um, certain uh, skills that they have developed and basically their ability to translate three dimensions into three dimensional world is um, it's, it's not an easy thing, but it's more relatable. I, I don't know if that makes any sense to anybody um, because whenever you're sitting there and you're looking at things in a three dimensional world, you have to figure out in your brain, <coughs> excuse me, and, and you have to be able to somehow translate, excuse me, I was choking, being able to translate that three-dimensional world into a two-dimensional world, but you have to use those principles that you have learned in the skill set to make it look three-dimensional. <clears throat> you know, your form, your lighting, your light source, all of those things, and, you know, basically you have to fool your viewer into believing that what they're seeing is three-dimensional. Um, but in a three-dimensional world, you can you can manipulate something to correct, and you can you can do a lot of things to help you. Um, oh, that gear is so small. Help you, and I've known quite a few three dimensional people that can't draw, and that's not to say that they're not creative. Because at the end of the day, the idea and the story is what shines through. And a lot of times, you know, they might have a weak drawing skills, but their storytelling skills are incredible, and their ability to convey. Um, ideas in a three-dimensional world are incredible as well. So, that being said, I don't even know what I said. <clears throat> right now, you can see I have basically laid in my basic form, my basic line, placement of the different elements of the giraffe. And what I'm going to go do now here for the next probably 20 to 25 minutes is I am going to go back and I'm going to correct and I'm going to say, okay, is this jaw low enough? Is this eye placement in line with the bottom of the ear? Okay. And, you know, is this bone structure correct coming around? And since his head is tilted, or I'm sorry, it's turning, what bones are going to stick out? Where is his throat going to be? And that's basically what I'm going to do in the next probably 30 minutes. You're going to probably just see it just hop, skip, and a jump on time lapse. But, so, I watched a, a really fascinating um, tutorial recently uh, from an artist by the name of Aaron Blaze. A lot of you guys know that I really, I like Aaron Blaze because he's such a versatile artist. And I, you know, he started out... Um, in South Florida, near the Florida Everglades, doing wildlife, and he had the opportunity to go to art school, and he did, and then once he was in art school, he really delved deep into um, what they had to offer, and eventually uh, he was able to get a job with the Walt Disney Company, and he worked there for years and years, and now he's basically a online teacher, and he does a lot of uh, tutorials, and he's got his own little school going on, and I, and I think he's just fantastic because he's giving back. You know, but I watched the tutorial, and of course he's going to make things look easy. <laughs> okay, but what he's honestly saying is the stuff is not that hard if you take the time 
and you you adhere to the steps that he's telling you to do and he's just a generally speaking you know from my observation I don't know the guy personally just from my observation he seems like a genuinely nice human being and of course being nice doesn't make you good but if you look at his work I mean there's proof in the pudding right there so that being said this is my start of my giraffe this is the general um, the general sketch very loose I'm, I'm, I'm literally going back and re firming the different areas that I think that I'm gonna have to come back on you know his his neck area comes down it's, it, it's rounded right here you know, and then this comes around right here, and this comes around, and the jawline right here dips a little bit lower right here, and then you have this bone that sticks out right here because it's part of this neck and vertebrae area. But what you're seeing right now is a rough template. So I'm going to come over here <clears throat> to the right-hand side and see how I can, I can adjust the opacity down. You know, I usually like to keep it at around 30 to 35%. And then what I do is I come back and I have a different, um, a darker, maybe a darker brown. And, and currently the sketch pencil I have is the color pencil. So in sketch, uh, in, I'm sorry, in Clip Studio Paint, it's got so many different settings for the, um, cancel, for the, uh, for the particular brush that you're using. So brush size, ink and aliasing, brush type. A lot of these are pressure. But what's nice about this, this is a new feature, the pin pressure. So if I turn this off and you look at, see how it changes right there. And I can, I can determine the minimum values, you know, and I can, I can pull this back if I want to have less at the start and, or more at the start. And it's just really nice. And you can adjust the pin tip, the brush tip itself, the thickness, you know, it's just really nice, the customization that you can do in this particular program. So I come back and I got my rough pencil. I've made a couple adjustments to the brushes. I have a rough, rough pencil with a thicker tip because I was finding I didn't really like the really thin tip. So what I'm gonna do now is basically I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna start putting in another layer of, uh, of complexity. Um, and I'm gonna, I keep looking back at my reference and I'm going to go back and I'm going to correct all the little itty bitty mistakes that I see that uh, got these things breaking new CNN all the little mistakes that I see that I made you know I'm going to go back and I'm going to correct those or I'm going to I'm going to come and I'm going to just make things a little bit better every single pass that I make I'm going to make them just a little bit better and eventually I'm going to end up with a sketch that, see I'm going to go back, see rough pencil, Let's see here, cancel, see, a little ink. see, watch, you see that right there, my minimum value, a little bit, right around here, see now, Barely, and then whenever I press really hard, it's really nice. Photoshop has had this feature for years and years, but it's always been one of those things that I really didn't like about Sketch, or I'm sorry, Clip Studio Paint, is the fact that um, that was one thing they were missing. And you're like, come on, dude. I mean, Photoshop's had that for years. And now that Clip Studio Paint has it, it's just, I love it. So anyway, um, keep watching. Uh, I'm going to try to not be too long-winded here and take too much time. Um, you know, Christmas is coming up. We have a lot of really cool uh, activities, you know, that we all do as uh, human beings here in the United States and, you know, around the world and celebrate uh, celebrating Christmas and the holidays and being with family. I encourage you, if you, um, you know, if you have the opportunity to go, yeah, this ear is whacked way out. If you have the opportunity to go and spend time with family, then I, you know, I highly recommend it. If, if your family is, you know, kind of crazy, you know, mine was always very interesting and all the holidays, you know, have always been <laughs> very interesting to say the least. 
Um, but it is your family. And just take a moment. I always like taking, you know, I told some of the kids uh, recently when I was teaching this week, I said, Christmas is much more, can be much more than what you think it is. It's more than just, you know, presents and, and, and uh, eggnog and, and, and sitting by the tree and, and stuff like that. Christmas is a time of reflection. It is a time to stop for a moment. It is a time to think. It is a time to look back on your on your life, on your on your uh, you know where you're at and where you where you've come and how far you've come and and stuff like that. And I, I highly recommend you guys to do this and and to see where you're going to go here in this next new year and and you know to enjoy you know the family that you have and and to just be with them. So anyway, thank you guys once again. Um, for visiting the channel. If you're here for the first time, welcome. Have a look around. There's quite a few videos here. Um, I, don't, uh, I don't have a lot of subscribers per se, but the ones that I have, I really enjoy. Um, you know, I don't make any money off the videos, so don't think that I'm getting... I had somebody <laughs> kind of criticize me recently because I, I, um, I drew the Beast from Beauty and the Beast. And they're like, if I wanted to watch somebody draw Beauty or, or The Beast, then I would watch Glenn Keane, you know? I guess you getting that big fat revenue check from YouTube makes a huge, you know, difference. And I'm thinking, dude, I don't, I don't do it because I, I, I want to make money off of this. I do it because I enjoy drawing the Disney characters and I enjoy, you know, enjoy showing uh, potential clients that I have that ability. And that's another thing. I, don't, I use the channel for more than just teaching. I use it as a marketing tool to kind of show potential clients, hey, this is actually me drawing. You know, if you if you want me to do something for you, you know, then uh, I am I am available. So anyway, thank you guys, and uh, hopefully um, we'll get this giraffe all polished up for you, and uh, we will definitely see you soon. See you next time. And I think I'm going to do another video before Christmas, so, but Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, if this is the only video of mine that you watch, and we'll see you soon.